Hello everybody, uh, this is the second part of uh, the somato sensations. So uh, first I'll talk about uh, the pain. Uh, the pain has two different aspects. One is uh, the sensation of the painful source and that part is actually um, termed as the discriminative aspect okay and the other part or aspect is the emotion related to the pain or accompanying the pain and that is called affective side or aspect of the pain and you know that our experience plays an important role uh, in our pain so <coughs> painful source includes uh, what is that that causing the pain okay and where the pain is coming from okay is it sharp or bland or what kind of pain okay so all those information and emotion those are uh, accompanied the discomfort the pain uh, sensation is uh, uh, processed in area s1 and S2. Uh, these are the earlier areas, somatosensory area 1 and area 2. Those are the areas related to the pain first and then another uh, structure of the brain that is called the anterior cingulate cortex that also uh, processes the pain. Prefrontal cortex are uh, more related to the cognitive cognitive aspect of the pain okay the experience the uh, discomfort part <coughs> and um, uh, so uh, s1 and s2 are more uh, related to the sensory aspect of pain uh, that's the uh, pain type okay and how much the intensity and what kind of pain and the emotional part uh, is more processed in the anterior cingulate cortex and prefrontal cortex. Here you see uh, anterior cingulate associated with, with the perceived unpleasantness of pain sensation, that is the discomfort I mentioned. Okay, and prefrontal cortex are uh, concerned with the cognition and executive control. Chemical uh, compounds, those um, are uh, involved in pain. Uh, endogenous opioids are the compounds that belong to a class of substances of opioids. So one type of opioids released by the body in response to painful and stress, stressful experience. So the endogenous opioid is released inside the body okay in response to pain and that is one type of uh, chemical and another uh, type of chemical endorphin endorphin are also endogenous opioids that have an inhibitory effect on pain related neural signals so this is just opposite uh, and endorphin you know, uh, sometimes uh, some people you uh, probably know that they can uh, learn how to, uh, you know, tolerate their painful uh, experience or uh, given pain. Uh, for example, some criminals, they, they uh, know the techniques when, you know, uh, they are interrogated or tortured uh, to get the you know uh, story out from them. The police or law enforcement they uh, they use uh, some uh, techniques uh, to create pain. However, they also learn how to you know tolerate them that pain. Uh, so you can uh, uh, use some tricks to release the endorphins into the body okay uh, and that will reduce your pain sensation 
pathway so autosensory pathway uh, first of course the receptors those receptors i discussed a lot are activated then uh, dorsal root ganglion uh, have the uh, sensory neurons uh, in case of the spinal uh, the signal enters into the spinal cord you have the dorsal root ganglion if from the area where you have like you know uh, in the upper part of the face the signal will not go to the spinal cord because it's way up so signal will go to the uh, base stem so in that case they will uh, the signals will go through the cranial nerve ganglions not spinal root ganglions okay and um, then ascending tracts carry the sensory signal and uh, sensory signal is uh, relayed in the medulla, then thalamus, and then processed in the primary somatosensory cortex, secondary somatosensory cortex, and other brain structures that I mentioned, uh, like you know, uh, cingulate, anterior cingulate uh, uh, gyrus or cortex, uh, also premotor area, right. Uh, similar to visual and auditory, uh, in case of somatosensory, the signal finally uh, goes to two different pathways, dorsal and ventral. Okay, so uh, uh, two pathways of uh, uh, pain uh, through the ascending pathway. One is uh, through the dorsal column medial lemniscal pathway, DCML and another is spinothalamic pathway okay and dorsal column medial lemniscal pathway uh, is for the signals involved in tactile perception touch and proprioception and travel of the spinal cord on the ipsilateral side and decussation or the crossover take, takes place in the medulla uh, in the medulla so in the, in the medulla the crossover takes place so the signal goes to the contralateral opposite side and then goes to the posterior nucleus of the thalamus vp of thalamus and uh, ventral posterior and then to the primary somatosensory cortex so that is the dcml and the spinothalamic pathway is mainly for the nociception and thermoception pain and temperature and uh, crosses over in the spinal cord so immediately crosses over to the contralateral side okay so here in the medulla so it goes stays in the ipsilateral side until it reaches the medulla then crossover takes place this one immediately after it enters into the spinal cord goes to the other side okay so those are two pathways now if you see uh, the pathway here this is showing uh, three uh, cr uh, cross sections uh, one is here in the middle of the spinal cord here uh, another is in the medulla and this is a section uh, through the brain cerebrum okay so uh, this is the spinal cord this is the medulla and this is the cerebrum okay those three plane sections now if you see the spinal cord what happens the signal uh, the blue one is showing uh, the dorsal column medial lemniscal pathway and the red line is showing the spinothalamic pathway okay so let's see first the dcml the dcml you see the signal uh, from the body uh, first goes to the dorsal root ganglion of the spinal cord where you have the pseudo-unipolar neurons pseudo-unipolar neurons have a one cell body and only one axon but that axon is uh, going both ways okay so this is a single axon remember this is the cell body uh, of the neuron pseudo unipolar and this is the for example your skin and here you have the receptors right and uh, 
the signal will go like this in the cell body and like this same action pseudo unipolar okay and uh, these neurons are located in the dorsal root ganglion so you have more neurons like that dorsal root ganglion in the dorsal root the round structure in the peripheral nervous system that contains the cell bodies of the sensory neurons are called the ganglions and if it, uh, um, the cell bodies are uh, inside the structure in the central nervous system uh, those are called nuclei okay and relay takes place here first relay because this is the area in the spinal cord this horn is called the dorsal horn where you have the neurons and they receive the signal from the pseudo unipolar neurons okay so relay takes place here and then the signal um, stays in the same side of the spinal cord and in the medulla when it passes through the medulla you see it goes to the opposite side and from there goes to the thalamus where the signal is relayed to so signal is relayed here signal is relayed in the thalamus this is bp ventral posterior thalamus and then to the cerebral cortex okay now uh, let's see the spinothalamic pathway the red one again dorsal root ganglion then you see immediately it goes to the opposite side contralateral side and then goes up through the ascending tract this is the spinothalamic tract okay and um, it does not relay in the medulla it goes all the way to the thalamus okay all the way to the thalamus and from the thalamus the signal goes to different structures in the same brain so let's now see the uh, blue one dcml you see from the thalamus the dcml goes to somatosensory cortex here this one however the spinothalamic tract the red one goes to the somatosensory cortex as well however uh, goes to other structures here you see the insular cortex and the cingulate cortex so anterior cingulate and insulate yeah, insular cortex also receive the signal from the spinothalamic pathway that carries the pain temperature okay so that's the sort of sensory pathway okay this is the spinal nerve which is a mixed nerve because it has all types of fibers sensory fibers two types of sensory um, somatic sensory and visceral sensory you see and this is the dorsal root ganglion pseudo-unipolar neurons right so the axon is going all the way to the dorsal horn where you have the interneurons and relay takes place here and you have two types of neurons here the visceral here you see uh, sensory and somatic sensory or somato sensory okay from the visceral internal structures the pain signal will go to these neurons and from the surface like skin to somato sensory and from there the signal will go upwards in case of spinothalamic will go all the way to the thalamus and in case of uh, the dorsal column uh, medial lamiscal uh, pathway it will go to the medulla first and will be relayed in the interneurons there and then will go to the thalamus and then to the uh, somatosensory cortex okay now the ascending tracts are located uh, in the outer part in the white matter in the spinal cord this part is the white matter and inner part is the gray matter this butterfly shape okay so from the dorsal horn the fibers 
actually go to the white matter and bundle together together to form the tract since this is sensory the here the blue tracts are sh uh, showing the sensory and red tracts are showing the model so these are sensory tracts okay in the white matter so the tracts are located in the white matter but the sensory cells are located in the gray matter makes sense in the gray matter or sensory neurons are located in the gray matter now here uh, you can see different ascending or sensory tracts or bundle of fibers in the white matter uh, vestibulo not this one the blue ones you see the spinothalamic there are two in each side ventral and lateral spinothalamic we talked about this uh, carry the pain and temperature and also you have cerebro, uh, spinocerebellar ventral this one dorsal this one and in the back uh, the dorsal column has the fasciculus gracilis fasciculus cavitus okay so those are the ascending or sensory tracts important sensory tract we already uh, talked about the interneurons where they are located okay uh, first order neurons these are the pseudo inopolar neurons cell body located in the ganglion right in case of the spinal cord um, if the signal goes through the spinal cord from the uh, area below the face uh, will enter into the dorsal root ganglion but if it is from the face area then we'll uh, go to the cranial nerve ganglion and then you have interneurons in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord in case of lower part and if it is from the face area uh, medullary nuclei. Uh, you have another set of interneurons in the thalamus, okay, and the axons extend to the somatosensory cortex. Thalamocerebral interaction. So finally, uh, the signal goes from the thalamus to the cerebrum. Now, this is interesting. This is the cerebral cortex, and this is the thalamus. Signal goes from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex, ascending fibers thalamocortical however experiments have shown that there are many descending fibers going from the cortex to the thalamus and the number of descending is actually more than the number of ascending and this circuit is continuously active and this keeps you conscious so this cortical thalamocortical uh, circuit is very important to keep the brain uh, active and keep us conscious primary somatosensory cortex if you see uh, the primary somatosensory cortex or s1 it has uh, actually four uh, sub areas you can see here by four different colors area 3a 3b 1 and 2 so those are four parts or areas in the primary somatosensory cortex or S1. So S1 has those, those four parts, post central gyrus in the parietal cortex. Okay, and they receive the signal. And then you remember I said uh, this is S1, primary somatosensory cortex. The signal uh, goes or travels to uh, the dorsal and ventral. The dorsal pathway is shown by the uh, black arrows posterior parietal cortex receives the signal first and then from there from the primary somatosensory goes to the posterior parietal cortex first and then from there goes all the way to the premotor cortex okay so that is the dorsal pathway and the ventral pathway is the red one from primary somatosensory to area S2 secondary and then from area S2 signal goes to the pre prefrontal cortex and also signal goes to the hippocampus this is more related to uh, the memory now uh, this is uh, very important you see that uh, I mentioned there are two aspects of the uh, pain or nociception so 
this is BP uh, nucleus of the thalamus and from the thalamus we know that uh, pain and temperature uh, those signals are carried by this pyenothalamic pathway uh, this is the thalamus and from the thalamus signal goes to the cerebrum different cortical areas okay. and here you see this is the discriminative pathway that means the discriminative information about the pain and this is the effective signal pathway okay so for discriminative uh, which structures receive the signal posterior insular cortex and area 3a and 3b of s1 so those two parts of s1 and the posterior insular cortex for discriminative aspect and then from area s1 signal will go to area s2 okay and let's see now the effective pathway the signal that uh, will be taken to the anterior insular cortex not posterior posterior is here this is anterior and anterior cingulate cortex so cingulate cortex is here okay uh, and amygdala so those three structures are more involved uh, in effective signal processing okay, more like psychological or emotional cognitive and discriminative is like you know that type of uh, pain that I explained uh, is it sharp or dull or intensity uh, the location uh, all those information okay so two pathways of pain or nociception you need to know the structures process those and this is a complete chart uh, very helpful you can get the whole idea about the uh, signal transmission uh, and sort of sensation here you see um, so tactile proprioceptive nociceptive thermoceptive all those information uh, first are processed in the thalamus then from the thalamus signal is given to uh, the different brain structures okay so let's see this side first in this side you can see that thermoceptive and nociceptive that means the temperature and pain that means the thalamic spinal thalamic okay pathway and the signal both signals are uh, given to the posterior insular cortex then uh, thermoceptive signal for the intensity of the temperature this is for the location of the temperature okay posterior singular receives the signal however for the intensity of the temperature anterior insular cortex receives the signal so although both are thermoceptive signals uh, thermoceptive has many information right the location as well as the intensity how hot or cold so two different structures are uh, uh, processing those two separate thermoceptive signals okay and then nociceptive this is effective and this is discriminative so you see the difference right the discriminative is processed in the posterior insular cortex however the effective aspect is processed in the anterior cingulate cortex okay and uh, also the nociceptive goes that signal goes to the anterior insular two and amygdala so actually nociceptive effective you remember the last slide goes to all three structures all these three structures and anterior insular anterior cingulate and amygdala let's go back so you will remember you see the effective anterior cingulate and uh, sorry anterior cingulate and amygdala 
so those three right so you can see here those three structures one two three affecting okay now in this side you see uh, the signal uh, coming mostly through uh, the dorsal lemniscal pathway so proprioceptive signal from the muscle spindle uh, tendon and uh, joints those are given to area 3a of s1 and uh, tactile signal touch from the mechanoreceptors and discriminative nociceptive signal discriminative nociceptive remember uh, that means the intensity of the pain type of pain uh, to area 3b okay and tactile signal from mechanoreceptors also goes to area 1 of the S1. So these are four structures or parts of S1 you remember we uh, talked about. So uh, 3A, 3B, area 1 and area 2. Area 2 receives signal, what kind of signal? Proprioceptive signal uh, from the muscle spindle and Golgi tendons. So proprioceptive signals are going to here, you see, to 3A and area 2. Okay. And tactile uh, are going to 3B and 1. 3A and area 2, proprioceptive, 3B and area 1, tactile uh, uh, or uh, touch. Then what happens, you see, uh, the area 2 receives signal from area 1 and area 1 receives signal from area 3B. Okay, and area 2 also receives signal not only from area 1, also receives signal directly from area 3B and 3A. So, we can say area 2 is receiving signal from all of those other 3 okay of s1 and then from area 2 of s1 signal goes to s2 and then from there uh, you see this is the ventral pathway that receives uh, s2 receives the signal this is the ventral pathway the red one and this is the dorsal pathway so actually from area 2 two pathways get separated ventral and dorsal okay ventral is uh, through s2 goes to hippocampus and prefrontal cortex and dorsal uh, posterior parietal and premotor that i showed you actually if you see here uh, the dorsal goes to premotor uh, posterior parietal and then premotor and ventral goes to area S2 from there to prefrontal cortex and hippocampus okay you see here prefrontal cortex and hippocampus okay and that's how uh, the signal uh, is processed some of the sensory signals are processed in the uh, different brain areas okay so this chart is giving you a complete picture. Orientation of the neurons in area S2. Experiment has shown that uh, different neurons prefer different orientations. Uh, so the experiment was pretty simple. You, you know, uh, and the fingertip, this is digit two, okay? Digit three, digit four, and digit five. They used those four fingers and they actually uh, moved uh, the bars uh, over the fingertip uh, to eight different orientations okay so uh, single neuron in monkeys s2 uh, when bars were uh, with eight different orientations were pressed against the fingertip of the four digits digit two three four and five and, and you see 
the firing of the neurons when the bar in this case was oriented like 90 degree that means you know uh, along the finger you see maximum firing in most of the cases 90 degree uh, 90 degree means this is your fingertip okay this is the nail so this way is 90 degree and we are used to feel the things this way more okay so that's why you see the firing is more as you change the orientation the firing changes okay homunculus uh, homunculus is a map of the entire body surface in your somatosensory cortex primary somatosensory cortex or s1 you have the entire body surface map based on the sensation or touch so this map in the primary somatosensory cortex is uh, representing all body parts but uh, disproportionately not proportionate that's why it is called homunculus that means dwarf person that means the head part is big the trunk is small and the legs are small but the foot are big like this okay hands are small but uh, the, the arms are small but if you see the hand fingers are big hands are big okay like this so this is called homunculus if we see the map in the primary somatosensory cortex it is like this so why is that uh, in the somatosensory cortex the areas that we use more to feel or sense something that area needs more neurons that means that area is expanded or bigger for example the face area here you see bigger than the neck or trunk you see here trunk area is small right but trunk is actually in your body is a big part but uh, the area in the somatosensory cortex for the trunk is small but the area for the face is big because the sensation in your face is more okay now let's see the hand you see hand occupies a big area in the cortex so this is more like use dependent map more uh, the areas we uh, have more sense sensations the areas are more the areas we use more uh, the area is bigger those areas we use less for sensations those areas are uh, represented in smaller uh, areas so that is the homunculus and experiments have shown that uh, if the person plays piano for many many years the finger areas get bigger both for motor and somato sensation okay you see here the dwarf or homunculus uh, the homunculus is present both in the motor cortex primary motor cortex and primary somatosensory cortex dermatome dermatome uh, is a map on the body surface not in the somatosensory cortex but in the body surface or on the body surface based on the areas innervated by the spinal nerves and we know that there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves however first pair is not participating in the uh, dermatome because it goes into uh, the cranium that means skull through the foramen magnum it doesn't get out so immediately after it is formed the first pair uh, they enter into the cranial cavity uh, other spinal nerve pairs are innervated um, uh, into the body surface and based on which area is innervated by which cranial nerve you can draw a map on the body surface or skin and that is uh, the dermatome okay uh, the use of dermatome is uh, if, if someone comes to you and tell that 
I am feeling numbness in this part of my body. Then you see here, this is lumbar 4, L4. This is L5. If someone says I have numbness in this area, you will see the chart, this dermatome chart, and you can uh, speculate that L5 is being pressed or damaged. Okay, so you know that lumbar bones are in the trunk part in the uh, vertebral column, and it could be due to uh, you know, compression or pressure on lumbar 5. If you see here, you can you know, suspect that lumbar 4 is being pressed or numbed. So uh, that's the main use of the dermatome. By looking at the map, we can tell which spinal nerve is involved okay, in any clinical condition. Okay, so now I'll uh, quickly go over a few uh, somatosensory disorders. One uh, type of disorders are primary tactile disorders and loss of um, any kind of you know, primary uh, somatosensation uh, would in, uh, belong to primary tactile disorders. Inability to detect uh, elementary uh, somatosensory aspects including uh, the pressure on the skin, two-point threshold, loss of vibration sense, deficit in proprioception, all those are primary sensations, right? Uh, so uh, any loss of any of those would be considered as primary tactile disorder. It could be due to impairment um, in the or damage to the contralaterals, primary somatosensory cortex, or even uh, below the thalamus or subcortical ascending pathway. Okay. <coughs> another um, type of uh, higher order, um, another type of uh, disorder, um, uh, which is more related to higher order touch disorder, uh, includes the disorder in haptic perception that I explained before. So the person um, may not have or may have lost uh, one or more haptic perception like texture, size, shape, weight, right? Um, uh, any of those. And the tactile, uh, the, the haptic uh, perception could be micro geometrical or macro geometrical. Macro geometrical includes the shape, size, okay, those aspects of haptic perception. And micro, small, uh, includes the texture, density, thermal properties of the haptic perception. Uh, hylognosmia. Hylognosmia is an impairment that is characterized by the inability to discriminate the texture, density, and thermal properties. That means the micro geometrical properties are lost. Okay, and morphognosia is uh, another clinical condition that means the patient has the inability to discriminate the size, shape, those information, those are the macro geometrical information okay so those are uh, higher order there are more higher order disorders uh, there are many more just few of these i am explaining another is tactile apraxia okay uh, the the object that we try to recognize using our finger uh, if I ask you to recognize something using your finger, you will not just touch it. You will move your finger, right? You will inspect uh, by moving your finger uh, to different directions to feel, uh, get more information. So by moving the finger on the surface, we can collect more information, not just keeping it or putting it um, on this object. We need to move 
uh, to different directions to collect more information and if that is the ability is lost that is tactile apraxia the subject won't move the finger uh, won't get the signal by moving the finger uh, finger Uh, another higher order uh, disorder is tactile aphasia uh, and uh, in this condition the problem is uh, the patient is unable to name the object when perceived by touch so by touching he cannot uh, name the object but if you show the patient uh, the picture of that object the person will be able to tell that means the visual pathway is intact but somewhere damage occurred in the tactile uh, pathway higher level tactile pathway that means in the brain okay and uh, the person will not be able to tell by touching it uh, but can tell by looking the picture or hearing it um, okay uh, interestingly, the patient is capable of naming the object when perceived through other sensory modalities, for example, by C. Okay. Okay. Uh, more higher order touch disorders, uh, structural body representation disorders. Uh, that means the patient uh, cannot tell the body, recog recognize the location of uh, his own body parts that is one condition another is he cannot um, uh, recognize uh, the arrangement of another person's body parts okay uh, so uh, lost the awareness of his own body or another person's body parts so that's why one is called autotopagnosia and another is heterotopagnosia auto means his own so he um, uh, lost the patient, lost uh, his own uh, body information about his own body parts. The um, uh, awareness is lost uh, in this condition. Uh, someone else's body parts. Okay. So those are just few um, abnormal uh, conditions or disorders or clinical conditions related to uh, the damage or lesion and the somatosensory pathway. Some of those are higher order disorders. And uh, you know, the lesion could be due to stroke, particularly the higher order disorders. Okay, so those are the things you need to know from this part of the somatosensory uh, uh, sort of sensory system of the body. Okay, thank you.